Section 17 of Nuggets of the New Thought Read by Jennifer Fournier, Marshall, Virginia, USA Nuggets of the New Thought by William Walker Atkinson The Man with the Southern Exposure Southern exposure as good a thing in a man as in a room. The Man Who Faces the Sun lives one day at a time and does the best he knows how and is kind finds joy and carries it to others simple loving kind open yourself to the sun did you ever go house hunting then you remember how the agent laid much stress on the fact that certain rooms had a southern exposure no matter how many other good qualities the house had all was subordinated to the fact that the best rooms faced the South. Had the longed-for Southern exposure. The very words conveyed to your mind the sensation of balmy breezes, the freedom from the rude blasts of the North, the cheering rays of the sun, plenty of light and healthful vibrations coming from old soul. Ah, that Southern exposure! How much the words convey! Now, if this southern exposure is such a good thing in a room, why isn't it a good thing in a man? Did you ever meet the man with the southern exposure? The man who faces the sun? Do you recall how he brought with him the inspiring solar vibrations? Do you remember how the wrinkles and frowns disappeared from the faces of those in his presence? Do you remember how, long after he had departed, the memory of his presence cheered you, the thrill of his thought vibrations remained to stimulate. We all know this man with the southern exposure. God bless him. We couldn't get along without him. There are a number of him, and he is scattered all over the globe. We call him by different names, but he is always the same man. After we have felt the cold northern chill emanating from some of the cold, despondent, negative people with whom we have come in contact— what a relief it is to meet someone who carries with him the mellowing, sunny vibrations of the south wind. The man with the southern exposure. As the vibrations of the sun bring life, energy, and strength to all things having life, so this sunny man brings positive, bright, cheerful, and happy thoughts to us, and stimulates, encourages, and strengthens us. He actually radiates sunshine and cheer in all directions, and thaws out the natures that have become well-nigh frozen from contact with people of the other type. Oh, it's a great thing, this southern exposure in a man or woman. This man faces the sun. He is an optimist. He looks on the bright side of things and gets all there is in life. He lives. He manages to extract fun out of the most unpromising conditions and things, and goes on his way with a smile and a cheerful song, an abiding faith in the absolute. He lives his life one day at a time, loving all of God's creatures and letting the creatures know it, carrying a message of hope and courage and a helpful suggestion to all mankind. He is the salt of the earth, and life would lose its flavor if he were taken from us. And how smooth the pathway of life seems made for him. It matters not in what station he may be placed, what seemingly small degree of material prosperity may come to him, what may be his surroundings and environments. He makes the best of everything. He still catches the rays of the sun and rejoices. He has the southern exposure. He is broad and tolerant, merciful and forgiving, devoid of hate, envy, and malice, free from fear and worry. He minds his own business and grants you the same privilege. He is full of love and radiates it to all the world. He goes through life in his own sunny way, meeting cheerfully the things that drive others to despair and misery. Somehow, things seem to be smoothed out for him, and he passes over the stony road unharmed. His peace comes from within, and all who meet him feel his presence. He does not seek after friends or love. Friendship and love come to him as a right. 
he attracts them. People are glad to see him come, and sorry to see him go. Little children and animals are drawn to him, and know him as their friend and lover. He is as much at home in the tenement of the laborer as in the palace of the wealthy. Both places seem home to him, and their occupants on a level. Brother to both saint and sinner is he, and he loves one as much as the other, for he somehow feels that each is doing his best. He looks for the good in the sinner, not for the sin in the saint, although he knows that both exist. He is not a Pharisee. He recognizes within himself all that is within both saint and sinner. He knows that he is not without sin, so he dares not cast the first stone. The outcast recognizes in him a brother. The woman who has passed through the fiery furnace trusts him and is not afraid, for she knows that he understands. He, being near the sun, knows that it shines alike on saint and sinner. He feels that when God withholds his sunbeams from his most disobedient child, then may he withdraw his love from his most degraded brother or sister. Until that time comes, he sees fit to love them. He does not condemn. He lets God exercise that prerogative, if he sees fit. He does not feel fit to act as judge. He believes that the universe is conducted on sound business principles, that God knows just what he is about and does not require any gratuitous advice from man. He works and works well. He finds joy in his work, pleasure in the humblest tasks. He likes to create things, and he is proud of that desire, for he feels that it is an inheritance from his father. He does not seem to hurry, nor is he rushed. He has plenty of time. Eternity lasts a long while, and he is in the now. He is not afraid of death or even life. He knows them as one. He goes about his way, doing his best, and letting the other fellow alone. He has an abiding faith in the absolute. He believes in infinite justice and ultimate good. He does not fear his father. He cannot find room for fear where love abides. He does not believe that there is a bottomless pit into which his loving father intends to plunge him. He has too much confidence in his father to think that. He believes that there is enough hell on earth to burn away the mistakes and ignorance of man, and he believes that all the burning ones will eventually emerge purged of their dross. He knows that his father is near him, for he has felt the pressure of his hand. In the darkness of the night he has felt the father's presence. By the glare of the lightning flash he has seen his form for a moment, and that memory is burned into his brain. He faces the sun, this man with the southern exposure. He is simple, loving, kind. He is of the elect. He is a prophecy of the future. And he is on the increase. On the tree of life are many promising buds, which the sun of the spirit is nursing into beautiful blossoms that will yet fill the world with the delicious fragrance of love. There are certain people who have come into our midst silently and without announcement. They have found places waiting for them. They have come to prepare the way for their brothers and sisters who are in the womb of the future. They are working quietly to prepare a home for their unborn brothers and sisters when they come. They are the forerunners of the coming race. Smiled at, sneered at, persecuted, reviled, pitied. It matters not. God has sent them. They have his message to deliver. That's why they are here. The world may raise its eyebrows, shrug its shoulders, tap its forehead significantly. But these new people smile. They know. They know. They see the misunderstanding multitude as mere babes in the spiritual knowing, many of them babes unborn and they heed them not. Take notice of these people. They are making their presence felt. They are wielding a silent, powerful influence, and are molding public opinion far more than are the blatant reformers, 
the boastful leaders, the bespangled figures strutting at the front of the stage. The people who are thus being used, instruments in God's hands, are these quiet men and women who are facing the sun, these people with the southern exposure. If you feel the call to join the ranks of these people, do not resist, but answer cheerfully, I hear, I obey, I come. Allow the seed to grow into the plant, the plant to put forth leaves, bud and blossom. When you feel the impulse, do not resist. Open yourself to the sun, receive its vibrations, and all will be well. Be not afraid. Have within you that love which casteth out fear. Place your hand in that of the Absolute, and say, Lead thou me on. After long ages of wandering, you are coming home. End of section 17